The second most common statistic reported for a dataset is a measure of the data's spread. The easiest statistic to compute to summarize the spread of the data is the range. Be careful though, the range can refer to two things. In statistics, the range is the difference between the highest and lowest observed values, that is, it's a single number. However, it can also be used to refer to the minimum and maximum values that occur in the data, that is, a pair of numbers. The range of a dataset can be quite big. Again, if the dataset has heavy tails, the range can be enormous, despite most of the data actually being concentrated in a much smaller window. The range is useful for some purposes, especially computationally, but it's often not so good as a summary of the data's spread. A very useful statistic, usually used in combination with the mean, is the variance or its square root, the standard deviation. The variance is calculated using this formula, and the standard deviation is sigma, the square root of the result. If this formula looks a little intimidating, let's break it down a bit. x bar is the mean as before. We have to calculate it by summing up all the data and dividing by the number of values. xi minus x bar is the difference between the data point xi and the mean. It's basically a measure of how unusual the data point xi is. Recall that the mean is supposed to be the typical value. Therefore, the difference xi minus x bar measures how far the data point xi is from the typical value xi minus x bar squared is the square of that difference. Since we square it, it's always a positive number. Variance is only concerned with distance. It doesn't account for if the observation is on the left or on the right of the mean. Finally, we sum the square difference over all the data points. We then divide by n minus 1. Forgetting about the minus 1 for a minute, this formula is like an average. We calculate the average square distance of a data point from the mean. Now, why n minus 1 instead of n? The reason is surprisingly complicated. It ensures that when we compute this from data, the number we compute is what's called an unbiased estimator of the true variance. Very simply, this means that we assume there is some true distribution that we have n samples of. As we take more and more samples, we get closer and closer to the true variance. It can be demonstrated that dividing by n leads to a slight underestimate of the variance when n is small, and that dividing by n minus 1 is technically correct. This formula, with the n minus 1, computes what is called a sample variance. If we divide by n instead, we're computing something called a population variance. This seems a bit esoteric, but when working with small samples, it can make a significant difference, and if you're using other people's code, it's important to know what definition they're using. As data scientists, we're usually working with large values of n, and for large values of, of n, the practical difference is minute. In summary, the variance, or more accurately its square root, is a measure of how far from the mean a data point is likely to be. Another useful statistic, similar to the standard deviation, but less often used, is the so-called mean deviation. Here, instead of taking the square of the differences, we take the absolute value. The mean deviation is usually slightly smaller and is less affected by outliers than the standard deviation. It's used much less often than standard deviation, again, because the standard deviation is much easier to work with mathematically. However, mean deviation is still a good statistic to be aware of.